Hello, Alan Bullard here, and welcome to this online viewing and listening session. I'm going to present some of my concert pieces for upper voices and piano for a range of ages. You can find more details of all these songs on my website, www.alanbullard.co.uk. They are published by several different publishers, and in many cases, the publishers can supply PDF downloads as well as printed copies. I'll give further details right at the end of this session. You will just hear a minute or so of each piece today, but my website contains links to complete performances on YouTube, SoundCloud or Spotify. So let's get going with a song that I wrote for a choir of eight to nine-year-olds from Dallas in the United States, but it's actually suitable for singers of any age. It's called Song to the Moon, and it's a setting of a text based on traditional poems from the Hebrides and gives the opportunity for a peaceful and flowing vocal line. It is for unison voices with an optional descant, and it's sung here by the Oxford Choir, conducted by Bob Chilcott. I think that that song is really suitable for a wide range of singers, like many of the ones that I'm introducing today. But this next one is perhaps best for young people. It's called A Strange Story, and it's a setting of an old riddle, which is either nonsensical or possible, depending on where you put the commas. It is split between two voice parts, and there is also an optional part for descant recorder. And it's sung here by a choir of primary school children in Colchester, Essex, directed by Elizabeth Pilkington, and it only lasts a minute, so here's the whole thing. now to another setting of a traditional folk poem. This one, called This is the Key, has an air of magic and I have always loved the visual images that the poem creates as it slowly unfolds and then returns to where it began. It is for unison voices with an optional second part and it's sung here by the wonderful Scunthorpe Cooperative Junior Choir from Lincolnshire, directed by their conductor Daniel Fields, in the first UK performance.
this next one is a song called Mind the Gap, about a tube train or subway journey. The words were written by a schoolgirl of part of a school poetry and music project that I was involved with, and there's a lovely sense of humour in those words, and I've set them for two-part voices in a call-and-response manner, so, in fact, it actually could be sung by unison voices. This recording was made virtually during the 2020 lockdown by the Bromley Youth Music Trust Junior Singers from South London. Each singer was singing on their own, and despite the inevitable coordination problems, they sing with real enjoyment and enthusiasm. Now there's a big change of mood for the next song. This is a setting of a poem by the early 20th century English poet Harold Munro and it's called Overheard on a Salt Marsh. It's for voices in two parts with an optional descant recorder part and the young people of the Scunthorpe Cooperative Junior Choir, this time conducted by Susan Hollingworth, really respond to the air of mystery in the poem. The next song, Stocking and Shirt, is one of my earliest songs for Upper Voices. The poem is by another 20th century poet, James Reeves, and although the text feels perhaps a little old-fashioned today, it still paints a great and exciting picture. My setting is for voices in two parts, and I found this performance on YouTube. It's missing the first few bars, and it doesn't say who the choir is, but they're clearly a good one, and the young voices sing with enthusiasm and excitement. Here's another song that came about through a project to involve primary school children in poetry and music. A group of children from West London came up with some phrases about conservation and the world around us, and I knitted some of them into this song called Running for the Future, which they later sung in a concert 
as part of a longer work called This Is Our World. Again, it's in two parts, but the second part is optional, and it's sung here by the Scunthorpe Cooperative Junior Choir, again directed by Susan Hollingworth. Moving on now to the final group of songs, these are probably more appropriate for teenage or adult upper voice choirs. This one is called Sweet Music and is a setting of the magical poem by Tennyson. It begins in just two parts but splits into four parts for the middle section, beginning with the words Here are cool mosses deep and through the moss the ivies creep. Here's part of the first section, sung by the Farnham Youth Choir, conducted by David Victor Smith. I couldn't resist including this next song, even though I don't actually have an upper voice recording of it. It's a light-hearted three-movement suite called Health and Safety, a title which will probably mean something to all of us. I've chosen the words of various safety warnings and instructions, and the set is available in the three versions, for boys changing voices, for SATB, and of course for upper voices, SSA. This is the last movement, Shocks, part of which is a setting of the instructions that came with my printer. Although the scrolling score is of the SSA version, it's performed here, and in a different key, by the Teenage Boys of the National Youth Choir of Scotland, directed by Christopher Bell. I imagine almost every singer knows Schubert's setting of Shakespeare's poem Hark, Hark the Lark. So I had a hard act to follow here in my setting of those words. And to me, the poem suggests a relaxed feeling, 
with the piano rising and falling, suggesting the lark soaring in the sky on a hot afternoon. It's in two parts, soprano and alto, with just a few divisions into four-part chords towards the end. Here's the opening section, sung by the Oxford Choir, directed by Bob Chilcott. And lastly, my song, Tread Softly, which is a setting of W.B. Yeats' famous poem, He Wishes for the Cloths of Heaven. Although mainly in two parts, it concludes with an easy four-part section where all voices echo the words, tread softly. Here's the whole song, sung beautifully by the Farnham Youth Choir, conductor David Victor Smith. And during the last section, I'll display the details of all the songs I've talked about today. So I'd like to thank all the choirs, pianists and conductors who performed these extracts, and I do hope you have enjoyed them. Thank you very much for listening, and I wish you all the best for your choral singing in the future. <laughs>